First question is from Kiki Murphy 13. What are some ways you can deal with the inevitable constant stress that is causing hormonal imbalances even when you eat right, exercise, and get adequate sleep. All right, well, there's, there's your Ned commercial. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Actually, that's no, that's not that's that's very true. There are yeah. things you can use Some that'll aids. help balance out or, or help your body deal with stress. Uh, I know we work with a company called Ned that makes hemp oil extract. It's actually the one of the only ones I actually feel when I take it, and that can help. There's supplements like ashwagandha. Ashwagandha can also help. But here's the here's the here are the big rocks. Here's the big thing that's going to help. Now, this person asked the question, and they mentioned eating right, exercise, and sleep. And then they said, I have a lot of stress, essentially, that's causing hormonal imbalances. Well, here's the beauty of a fit and healthy lifestyle. Use it like a tool to optimize your life, whatever's happening in your life. So what does that mean? If your life has a lot of stress at the moment, then you can modify your nutrition, your exercise, and your sleep to help your body deal with that stress. So if you're very stressed out, that means you're probably going to want to sleep more. Your workouts are going to be more focused on mobility, flexibility, feeling good. Your diet is going to be uh, you know, higher in foods that are nourishing and healthy to the gut, to your digestive system, and to the body. Let's say, let's say your life is low stress at the moment. Things are going great. Well, now you can push your workouts. You can push the sleep a little bit and get away with a little less sleep. You can push the diet in bulk or cut aggressively because the rest of your life is allowing for that. So this is how you want to view those things. You know, I've, I've gone through periods of my life where they were very, very stressful. I'm not going to the gym trying to hit PRs. I'm not going to the gym trying to, you know, go beast mode. When I go into the gym, when I'm stressed out, I'm thinking to myself, what can I do to help my body deal with the stress that I'm dealing with mm -hmm. at the moment? It usually looks like mobility, lighter movement, flow type movement, things where I'm kind of making myself feel better. I also think there's a lot of value in scheduling like days that are, and and whatever it is that you, you use to decompress. So whether you're yoga, meditation, you read, go by the ocean, go massage. to the mountains, get a massage, like... Um, this is something that Katrina really hacked in with me uh, early on in our relationship was I, I can get really, really uh, focused on the business and work. And, mm -hmm. and even though I love what I do, uh, it can become stressful because you got a lot of, a lot of moving parts, right? And, uh, and I can always, I, I put myself off, you know, oh, I'll eventually get to the massage or I'll eventually mm -hmm. take a vacation, I'll do that. Where she, she knows me so well that she can feel that coming on even before I think I can feel it coming on. And so she will actually in the calendar will already put like, we're going away. Phones are going away. We're going to go stay at our favorite place by That's the nice. ocean and do things like that. Or are she just, in fact, this was just what, two, two weeks ago. Um, I came home on Friday and we had, you know, a, a massage therapist at the house ready for me to go. So, and I didn't even know that I was going to have a massage. So she'll do things like that to help me decompress, even if I'm not like saying, oh, I'm all stressed out. So I think um, either having a, a person who can support you and do that with you or you making a conscious effort to like kind of look at your calendar ahead of time and go, OK, I need to every so many weeks. And it doesn't have to be expensive. It either. can actually just be open space, right? I know. I know. I said things that are probably expensive, like staying at a, a nice hotel on the beach or doing a massage. It, it doesn't have to be that. It could literally be like just go for like a long walk somewhere in nature that you really like. Whatever. Just you know, having it though on the on the books that you're going to go do this, and the intent is for you to really kind of let go of all the outside mm -hmm. distractions and be present with yourself. Well, one thing that uh, kind of came to mind for me that I know. Uh, really helped a lot too was, um, and I've told some of my clients to kind of do this and to jot down and make a list of, of things potentially that were stressing you out. And so having some sort of like an inventory, uh, you know, of stress, but, but really for me, it was, it was about eliminating a lot of like the chaos, a lot of the chaos, uh, chaotic elements. So uh, ways that I could get ahead, uh, you know, in work, or I could, I could accomplish things in, in a timely manner and, and address things when I need to address them instead of put them off. That actually like was increasing a lot of the stress uh, that would accumulate and I would carry that with me like uh, throughout the rest of the week. And so to, to be better about like what Adam's saying in terms of like scheduling myself. Yeah. If I schedule that, I'm going to have this day where I'm going to, uh, I'm going to walk, I'm going to 
going to get all these types of like de-stressing type activities. Um, I, I have to be able to have this one window to really hammer out all the, the, the needs to, and to get it done. You just reminded me of something else too, Justin, that, you know, sometimes the things that cause like this low level stress or even sometimes high level stress is something that you're not addressing and it just keeps resurfacing. And so I've talked before about like how I used to train myself to be better at self-awareness. At, at nighttime, I used to lay in bed and kind of go back in my day and think of all the, the moments that were ups and downs, or in this case, we're talking about stress. So talking about the times that were I was frustrated or irritated or stressed out, I would go deeper into why I felt that way. Sometimes um, it's because you have something uh, underlining that is not that you're not dealing with. And so it's, it's surfacing as, as like work stress or daily life stress and working and practicing on self-awareness was one of the things that helped me get to the bottom of that. So for example, you're going through your day and you feel all stressed out at work. Well, what was it exactly that happened at work that made you feel quote unquote stressed out and then unpacking that and being like, well, why does that bother me? Or why is that? Yeah, stressing? Maybe it's because I'm insecure about exactly. the thing or whatever. Exactly. And, and in fact, 99% of the time, that's exactly what I'd find out, Sal, is that like there was a, a deeper rooted insecurity or fear that I had in my life that was surfacing mm -hmm. as stress at work or stress in a relationship or stress in other, other places, but that wasn't really the root cause of the stress it was because i kept bearing it and then it would it would emerge in other parts yeah, by so. the way oftentimes mm -hmm. that comes out in physical ways too right so oftentimes if you're not dealing with some kind of uh, emotional stress and you're just kind of burying it it can it can look like pain back mm -hmm. pain injuries yeah um, you'll often see this. You'll hear massage therapists talk about this. Well, they'll work on someone. They'll find a tender area. They'll push it and yeah. work on it. And then the person will get this emotion right. or they'll start crying. They're just or they're, trapping it in a place in their body. They're trapping it somewhere in the body. This actually legit can happen. Yeah. So here's my protocol with stress. So I'm going to give you a little bit more specifics. Here's what I do. I don't go on a cut and I don't go on a bulk. I don't go on a cut because well, my body's under a lot of stress. Uh, uh, cutting your calories below maintenance is an additional stress. I don't want to add a stress. I also don't want to bulk. Because I know when I'm stressed, if I try to bulk, that turns into garbage food. It turns into heavily processed food, which isn't going to benefit me. So I tend to eat around maintenance. And I also focus on foods that are very easy, easy to digest for me. Mm -hmm. For me, that looks like meats, fishes, no fried foods. If I do eat carbohydrates, it's, it's rice. If I do eat vegetables, they're very well cooked so that they're pre-digested. Why? Stress for me affects my gut, does this for a lot of people. So I focus on that. With my workouts, my intensity is at 50%. I'm doing full mate range of motion stuff. I'm doing more stretching. I'm taking my time in my workouts. Sleep, with sleep, I'm paying more attention to the two hours before I go to bed. Blue light blocking glasses. I'm trying to bring mm. my body down. Some I might mellow. take I might take, you know, uh, Ned sleep or some melatonin. Do that before I go to bed to get better sleep. When I do those things, my body's far more resilient to the stress that's happening in my life. When I don't have that stress, then I can push the bulk, the cut, the hard workouts, and less sleep. But if I'm not doing, if I have a lot of stress, I got to optimize those. And that's why I said, use them as tools, modify them to optimize your life.